Would you class yourself as a good photographer? Or do you class yourself as someone that's just started and you literally have no idea what to do? Well, this is what I'm gonna really be talking about today. What's up guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. I don't have a squeaky chair, look, listen. Jeez. <laughs> so today's topic is gonna to be becoming a better photographer off season. What I mean by off season is, it's now that time of the year, it's this, uh, we're in December, uh, if you are watching this when I upload it, but this can apply all year round anyway, but off season means you've not got much shoots booked, you don't have many car shows, if that there's no car shows, nothing's really on, you're not really busy with your camera, and you kind of find yourself not using your camera as much as you want to, and obviously that sucks, but it means you're in off season. So now is the opportunity for you to hone your skills. So when you do finally get your camera back out and you're doing shoots and you're going to car shows and you're getting people, clients booked in, you know for a fact that you can smash, you're gonna smash those shoots just because you've honed those hours and hours, days, weeks of you practicing certain editing styles and you've made new presets for different situations and you know for a fact that you're going to smash those so instead of wasting your time and sitting on your batty all day <laughs> you could actually be using that time productively even though you're in off season it's winter so you might as well use that time to become more knowledgeable and more efficient with shooting editing video editing photo retouching everything all that shit, all, all that shit. if you are completely brand new to photography let me tell you don't stop using your camera don't give up because you think oh my pictures are so shit you've only just got a camera so like you have to go through the process i'm pretty sure i can throw some photos on screen of me years ago and what my photos used to look like so um, here's a photo of probably from a couple of years ago and then here's of one recent so you can see the difference in like editing style, composition. I had a 550D, so obviously that camera wasn't great, but it still produced the image and it's still, that's the thing that matters. So don't jump into photography and just expect for you to be sick from day one. It's not how it works, man. Like, like anything, practice makes perfect and you have to put your hours in for you to become a better photographer, regardless. I don't care who you are, who you think you are. If you've just started photography and you've not done it before, you're not gonna be good at it. But luckily for you, there's a free website you can go to that has free training, tutorials, walkthroughs, advice, everything. And you're on it, it's YouTube. <laughs> Utilize that. You've got all these free videos on YouTube for you to go through and watch if you've just started to become better at certain areas. The first main thing is, and the biggest question I always get in my, on Instagram, which is Lewis Moss Media, <laughs> is, Lewis, what camera do I get? What equipment shall I get? I've got this much money, what camera do you recommend? Here's my quick advice. Set a budget and then go searching on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Gumtree. So two cameras I'd recommend, um, starting at a lower budget would be a like Canon 80D. I used to have that. I did a lot of video work for it. It was like with it, it was sick. It takes good pictures. It does everything for a, the price point. Next up from that would be like a Sony A7 Mark II. Really good camera, you can pick them up again, probably just a bit more than a Canon 80D. Takes good videos, takes good pictures, gets the job done. Um, I think Heart, Heartnet Media from Australia, everyone knows him. I'm pretty sure he still uses a Sony A7 II, or used to, and I mean, look at the work he does. So it just goes to show that camera is not that expensive, but yeah, it can produce amazing image quality. So there you go. So the next thing would be write down situations you're not good at and go out in those situations and shoot. Force yourself to go out. If you're not good at night shooting, get your camera and go out at night. <laughs> it's literally that simple. If it's models or portrait photography that you do, message a friend that you've worked for or, or worked with or a model that you've worked with before. Offer them a free shoot. Say it's at night, ask them to bring a friend or whoever um, if they feel safer, just having another person with you so there's three of you. Just say to them, I just want to practice night shooting. Um, can you just come and help me out? You get free photos, I get free practice, and we both win at the end of the day. And you can hone your skills from there. Same goes for car photography. If you've got a mate, it doesn't even have to be an amazing car, just someone's car that you can use just to practice on. You don't even have to post the photos. Just use that car as practice for you to go through different situations, you can edit the car in different ways to see what you enjoy. You can make your own presets. 
You could pick up my preset pack with a night <laughs> night preset. See that slide little <laughs> that slide little plug in there. My five nighttime presets will obviously help you if you are struggling and you don't know really where to start. It's my it's definitely my most popular preset pack on my website. Anyway, let's carry on. <laughs> but putting yourself in those situations on purpose is gonna force you to become better at that situation. Next thing is setting yourself challenges for you to practice editing. So find a photo on purpose that has lots of distractions. We're gonna go to Photoshop in a second, I'm gonna show you what I'm, what I'm on about, but find a photo that's got rubbish in, people, cars in the background, and remove those things on purpose to become better. So we'll jump into Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. So in Photoshop, first thing you wanna do is make a new layer, name it whatever you want, and then we're gonna apply the changes and the fixes over the top of this layer so it doesn't destroy the original image. Clone stamp tool is S for the shortcut. Make sure it's on all layers. Then all you're gonna do is zoom in, so you can just press Z or Z, whatever you wanna say. <laughs> all you're gonna do next is press and hold Option on Mac or Alt on PC, I believe. And then the crosshair, you're gonna click and that's gonna be the target area that you're gonna clone. So as you can see, it just paints in where the crosshair is. And as you're doing it, you can see the crosshair on the side. So just do it a little bit over. Really easy for me to clone this just because we've got the trees. We'll just speed up this section. But as you can see, you get the idea of doing that and that's before and after. Next, you're just gonna press J on the keyboard. So this is basically the spot healing tool. From here, it's just one click over something and Photoshop will automatically clean that area up. Speed it up, as you can see, just little touches here and there. And just a basic sort of removal. So yeah, super easy. So as you can see, it's not that difficult and you can just blast through a couple of photos as practice, set yourself challenges and become better, more efficient in Photoshop. Because it's definitely gonna be a photographer tool and you are gonna use Photoshop at some point in your photography career, or even if it's just a hobby, you are gonna use Photoshop at some point to get rid of something. Next one is shooting spots and locations. So I've already done a video on this. I'm gonna link it up here somewhere. I'll throw a thumbnail on the screen. But in that video, I'll basically show you how to find locations, how to find spots for you to shoot. It's mainly focused on cars, but you can obviously be exact same process um, if you're shooting models. But yeah, briefly going over it, if you have a list of locations and spots that you can go to for any situations, you know for a fact that when you do get someone booked in or someone wants to shoot, you know where to take them based off what car the colour is. Or what? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Car the colour is or what the uh, model looks like and what they want from you as a photographer. They think, oh, I want street, I want street urban sort of vibes, not much green, like quite desaturated. You could be like, oh, bang, I've got some shots. I've got them all on my shot list. I've got them on my notes and I know exactly where I'm going to take that model. Or it's a car, it's red, bang, I want to make sure the red stands out more than anything else. So all the locations I go to, I'm going to make sure that nothing else in the frame is red because I want the car to stand out. So I'm going to have um, desaturated backgrounds and I'm going to take it to this spot, I'm going to take it to that spot. You get the idea. <laughs> so onto the last one, this is going to be a photography trip just by yourself. The good thing about this is you can just get you and your camera, you can go somewhere. If you live in the UK, you can just take a trip to the biggest city. Close by, you've got Manchester, Liverpool, London. London's obviously gonna be a popular spot. Trains these days are pretty cheap. Hotels are pretty cheap if you wanna do a night stay. Or you can literally just go from morning and then get the latest train home. You can spend a good 10, 11 hours in London just literally doing street photography. I feel like every photographer needs a trip alone, just you and your camera, go out, and just enjoy photography, man. Like, I'm gonna throw a couple of clips on the screen whilst I'm talking of me just in London. Random shots here and there that I took on the train, on the way to where I'm going, in London as well, on a night shoot on different occasions. And it's just a place where you can just play around with your camera and exper experiment with what you're good at and what you enjoy shooting. And basically, it will make you fall in love more with photography and your camera because then you can get back and you've got the train trip back if you take your laptop. You can edit all the way back and you just, you will come away from that trip with a lot of shots and a lot of photography that you can just practice on. You don't even have to go to the city if you're a landscape photographer. Go Lake District or somewhere and just go for a day. Organize something where you literally just go with the sole purpose of just using your camera to take photos. I guarantee you will absolutely love it. Especially if you've never been to London before, you will come away from that place with so many bangers for your Instagram. You'll be 
stockpiled for weeks, man. <laughs> Plus on top of that as well, wherever you go on the trip, you can come away with it with more experience to make you more confident with your uh, ability to take photos. So there we have it guys, there's a couple of tips that you can put to good use to make yourself a better photographer off season. This can apply all year round, you can do it mid next year, you can have a quiet uh, week or two and just think, you know what, I'm gonna go and just enjoy myself with my camera. No client work, no jobs to do, I'm just gonna go out and just enjoy myself. I wanna do more videos like this, like I keep saying, I need to up my YouTube and I am trying, it's very hard to make these videos. <laughs> But yeah, I do appreciate everyone that watches these videos, supports it, drops a like, drops a subscribe, even drops a comment, that's always pretty sick. Like I always say, the less we hate, the more we create. So get out with your camera, go do something constructive and stop sitting on your batty. <laughs> See you in the next video.